Lord be with you. And also Let us pray. O God of creation, eternal majesty, you preside over land and sea, sunshine and storm. By your strength, pilot us. By your power, preserve us. By your wisdom, instruct us. And by your hand, protect us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Well, good morning. This morning, I'm going to read to you the story that we have for our gospel lesson today. And it's a story that talks about Jesus and a boat and a lake. And in this Bible storybook, the Spark Bible storybook, which you have, is the story about a storm. Okay? So, do you want to stand up? If you could stand up now, first of all, all right? Because... Jesus and his friends, the disciples, met by a lake one day. They were going fishing together. Then all you heard was creak, creak, and the fishing boat rocked as they got in the boat. Will you get in the boat with me? Ready? One leg up, oh, over in the boat. Now we're sitting in the boat, okay? And it said, boat began to rock. Can you rock a little with me? Well, the boat began to rock. And Jesus' friends were talking and laughing in the boat. Can you smile with me? Can you smile? They were smiling and having wonderful conversation on the lake. Look at them. Then they said to Jesus, what's your best fishing trip? What's the best fishing trip you ever had? And they looked around in the back of the boat, and Jesus was asleep, fast asleep in the back of the boat. Now, all of a sudden, gray clouds came into the sky and pushed the sun away. The boat rocked harder. Are you ready? Boat rocked harder. And the first raindrops came, plop, plop. Plop. The disciples held their coats around them as the rain fell harder and harder. And they said, brr, they got cold, so can you make yourself? Now they're no longer smiling, but they're cold. The rain was cold and the wind was blowing strong against their skin. The waves came flying up over the top of the boat, splash, lightning flashed all around the boat. Thunder was cracking. They looked scared. Can you help me do that? What's your scared face? What do you have? Oh, that kind? What? Oh, that kind of face? Okay. Everybody has a scared face. Oh, my goodness sakes. We shouldn't be out here on the boat, they said. They shouldn't be on the lake. And how could Jesus sleep? He was still sleeping in the back of the boat. Lightning was coming. Wind was all over. They couldn't wait any longer. Finally, they shook Jesus awake, and they said, Help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. Jesus opened up his eyes. He saw the fright on their faces and said, Now why are you so afraid? Jesus stood up in the boat. See him? Jesus stood up in the boat. He lifted up his arms and he said, Peace, be still. Peace, be still. And at that very moment, the waves lay down on the lake and it all became quiet. It became so quiet. And the clouds made space again for the sun to shine. And the raindrops stopped. And there was silence instead of thunder. And the disciples said, ah, can you say that with me? Ah. I need a little more ah than that. Are you ready? Ah. 
and again. Ah. Oh. And they, the friends of Jesus stared at each other. Did you see that? They said, Jesus saved us. We are alive. We survived that awful storm. And they said, thank you, Jesus. It was a wonderful day for them because Jesus helped them out when they were in a difficult time. So thank you for listening to the story today from the Bible. And Miss Brooke is somewhere today. Miss Brooke will be taking you to do your work together. Do you want them to come to you? Would you go to, oh, I am so sorry, Declan. Please, thank you very much for listening this morning. Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord. When evening had come, Jesus said to the disciples, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose. And the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. This is a really hard Sunday to preach. As I wrestle with speaking God's word today, I feel like John Stewart. If you know John Stewart, he has hosted Comedy Central's The Daily Show, part comedy, part past current, past current events, and commentary since 1999. When it came time for some opening remarks this week, he said, I got nothing. I got nothing but sadness. In light of the murders in Charleston on Wednesday night, there was not a lot of laughter, but a clear call for our country to face fear and hate and racism. So I struggle today with finding the right words, and I honestly feel like saying, I got nothing. I have sat in silence waiting for God to reveal to me what word God wants us to hear today. As we listen to each of the lessons, there are so many questions. Why do bad things happen to good people? Where is God when tragedy strikes? Why does the Apostle Paul and his companions experience afflictions and beatings and imprisonments for their faith? Why are the disciples put in deathly danger in a storm? The entire book of Job is an argument regarding the question, why would God do something like this to a faithful man? And questions aren't just for the scripture. Questions continue to this day. Just open up your newspaper or web browser. 
Why are people in Texas subject to the destruction of floods? And why are fires raging on the Southern California mountains, destroying God's beautiful creation? Why did arsonists attack the church of the multiplication of the loaves and fishes this week near the Sea of Galilee? And in the week of Juneteenth, why did a young man enter a holy place and hatefully murder nine faithful followers of God. So joining the disciples in the midst of storms, we shout, the Bible says said, I, they must have shouted, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? God, don't you care about the pain and sorrow and horrible things going on in this world? It's a hard week to preach. Our presiding bishop, Elizabeth Eaton, wrote a statement on Thursday before the arrest of Dylan Root, and I want to share her words with you. They are not easy words, but important, especially for the ELCA to hear. And Eaton writes, it has been a long season of disquiet in our country. From Ferguson to Baltimore, simmering racial tensions have boiled over into violence, but this, the fatal shooting of nine African Americans in a church is a stark, raw manifestation of the sin that is racism. The church was desecrated. The people of that congregation were desecrated. The aspiration voiced in the Pledge of Allegiance that we are one nation under God was desecrated. Mother Emanuel's AME's pastor, the Reverend Clementa Pinckney, was a graduate of the Lutheran Theological Seminary, the Lutheran Theological Southern Seminary. Also was the Reverend Daniel Simmons, a graduate of that Lutheran Seminary. The suspected shooter, she wrote this on Thursday morning, is a member of an ELCA congregation. All of a sudden, and for all of us, this is an intensely personal tragedy. One of our own is alleged to have shot and killed two who adopted us as their own. And we might say that this was an isolated act by a deeply disturbed man, but we know that that is not the whole truth. It is not an isolated event, and even if the shooter was unstable, the framework upon which he built his vision of race is not. Racism is a fact in American culture, and denial and avoidance of this fact are deadly. The Reverend Pinckney leaves a wife and children. Today is Father's Day. The other eight victims leave grieving families, and the family of the suspected killer and the two congregations are broken. When will this end? The nine dead in Charleston are not the first innocent victims killed by violence. Our only hope rests in the innocent one who was violently executed on Good Friday. Emmanuel, God with us, carried our grief and sorrow. And the grief and sorrow of Mother Emmanuel AME Church and he was wounded for our transgressions, the deadly sin of racism. Eaton continues, I urge all of us to spend a day in repentance and mourning, and then we need to get to work. Each of us and all of us need to examine ourselves, our church, and our communities. We need to be honest about the reality of racism within us and around us. We need to talk and we need to listen, but we also need to act. No stereotype or racial slur is justified. Speak out against inequity. Look with newly opened eyes at the many subtle and overt ways that we and our communities see people of color as being of less worth. Above all, pray for insight, for forgiveness, for courage. Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy. It's a hard Sunday. 
Bishop Eaton's words verbalized things that I could not, and yet I still needed more help for today. I did extensive reading. I digested countless comments in my news feed, as if listening to Job's friends who had strong opinions and advice what he was supposed to do. I am in awe of the families of the victims who have graciously offered forgiveness. I'm stunned at those who deny the evil of the act and the debates of the media semantics of terrorist, thug, or someone with mental issues. I kept reading and listening, and I kept coming up blank. Prayer feels futile, and I felt and truthfully continue to feel powerless. And then, and then I went to church. Yesterday, we celebrated the life of Jan Rita Clemison, the mother of our media director, Matt Mellon. We commended her. Wow, where is this coming from? <laughs> we commended her into the loving arms of God. Excuse me. And with different ears in this bulletin, I heard the prayer. Help us in the midst of things we cannot understand to believe and trust in the communion of saints, in the forgiveness of sins and the resurrection to life everlasting. I heard those words. Help us in the midst of things we cannot understand. Help us in the storms of life. Bring peace to us and to this world. <laughs> Good thing I didn't wear mascara today. And then <laughs> I reread words from Barbara Brown Taylor, one of my favorite theologians. She wrestles with God and wrestles with the Job text we heard today. If there is an answer to the unjustifiable suffering in Job, then it is only this. But for most of us, the worst thing that can happen is not to suffer without reason, but to suffer without God, without any hope of consolation or rebirth. All other pain pales next to the pain of divine abandonment. Ask Jesus about that one. And what Job wants us to know is that God does not finally abandon us. Where there is nothing left, when all the flocks have been stolen and all the children have been buried, when there's nothing left but a potsherd with which to scratch our sores, what is still left is the God of all creation who laid the foundation of the earth, who has walked in the recesses of the deep. This is the Lord of all life, who never runs out of life. If you read the entire book of Job, you will notice that God never directly answers the questions. God never answers. But God does remind us that God is God, and we are not. And in the storms of life and death, even when we cannot confront the sin around us and deep within us, when we are afraid and lacking faith, and when we are stuck in the questions and wonder, don't you care? The risen Jesus remains with us. That is the promise. Jesus, who went to the cross for us and our salvation, remains with us in this world and the next. And to that, we say thanks be to God. Amen.
Trusting the Spirit's power, we pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. O oh God, you call your church through the waters of baptism. Give courage to those who lead us through word and sacrament, witness, service, and song. Strengthen all the baptized for lives of service in Christ's name. We pray for our covenant congregation, Christ Episcopal, and for their priest, John, for Peace Lutheran Church and their pastor, Robin, and for St. Daniel's Lutheran Church and their pastor, Re Rebecca. We also pray for our Trinity members, Emily, Jesse, and Amani, Luther and Rosemary, Irene, Lucy, Jeff, Virginia, Libby, and Neil, and for our call committee and candidate, Hear us, O oh God. You nourish the waters of creation. We pray for oceans and rivers, including the Schuylkill and Tulpehocken, streams and lakes such as Antietam, Anilani, Blue Marsh, and Hopewell. Grant us wisdom as we care for life-giving waters. Hear us, O oh God. You pilot the nations. Direct all leaders in the daily tasks of listening and speaking. Bring peace to all people and places afflicted by war, violence, disaster, and injustice. Hear us, O oh God. You soothe our fearful hearts. Comfort those who grieve, those who are lost, those who doubt, and those who are sick, especially for Joe, Tom, Larry, Tom, Dorothy, David, Tom, and Brian. Give faith in the midst of all that troubles your people. Hear us, O oh God. You protect and guide the human family. Supply wisdom and energy to those who nurture children, especially fathers and mentors. Hear us, O oh God. We give thanks for the saints. Make us attentive to your voice in this life and grant us eternal peace in the life to come. Hear us, O God. Lord God of compassion, again in these United States we have sinned against you. Your children in Charleston have been ambushed while studying in your holy word. Continue, we people gathered here at Trinity to pray unceasingly for the nine families that grieve because of earthly death, for the Root family in need of solace as they beg for forgiveness. But keep us, O Lord God, at your wheel to dig ever more deeply into this nation's hatred because of race. Lord, it seems bigger than we are, but nothing is outside of your realm and kingdom. And may we reason together to, to come to some sensible human understanding about our use of firearms. We seek your counsel 
not just this week again in tragedy, but for whatever time it takes to bring peace to these United States of America, we seek peace within our own shores. Hear us, O God. Receive these prayers, gracious God, and those prayers known only to you. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.